Hey guys, Bill Nichols here. Let's talk Lightroom, filtering and finding images in Lightroom. All right guys, another Lightroom episode tonight. I wanna make this one a good one for you showing you how to find really quickly, no matter how massive your catalog is, be able to find whatever images that you're looking for, some strategies and tips that I use and how you can get the most out of filtering. <laughs> um, tomorrow is a week since our daughter was born. I wanna say thanks to everybody that sent me a congratulations. And so I thought I'd have like a little bit of wine night while I was working in a light room and I was at Trader Joe's today. I found this canned wine. Have you ever tried this? It's uh, by a company called Underwood. It's not terrible. It's totally weird. Um, it's not really much of a dark Pinot, the color to it, but I don't know, a little bit of a little tannins, uh, and a little blackberry jujube taste maybe. It's not fantastic. It's not terrible. Two glasses in a can. No way am I going to drink two glasses of this. But I want a little celebratory drink while I was sitting here running through Lightroom with you guys. So I picked this up while I was in Trader Joe's. I should have just stuck with a bottle of wine, but I wanted to be adventurous and try this out. All right, so let's hop into Lightroom. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you can use filtering, um, the ways that I use filtering to find images across large catalogs. So typically in the past with Lightroom, I had different catalogs for personal stuff, for client stuff, for teaching stuff whatever. Um, and whenever I'd move computers, I'd always have a new catalog. So I have catalogs all over the place and I'm slowly consolidating them to a large catalog, except for like a temporary transit catalog that I'll have on my MacBook when I go on location on shoots and I shoot tethered. But um, other than that, I'm moving everything to large catalogs. So what I'm finding is that I'm having to use filtering a lot to go back and find images and either break them up into this family catalog or into a client catalog. So I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'm going to start with we're in the library mode. We have a catalog open that has 18,212 images. So the main three filters that I use for 99% of my filtering in Lightroom is I look at the rating, I look at the keywords, and I look at the color label. And I use those for different things. So when I first import images in, I let's say that I have a headshot session somewhere. I import my images in, and the first thing that I do is I select that entire session and I keyword them. And I always start with the date. So if it was today, I'd go 2016-08-17, and then I would do a comma for a new keyword, and I'd put the year 2016, comma, and then I'd put the month, August, and then from there, I would say what type of session it was. So let's say that it was a headshot session. I'd put headshot session. And then from there, I'd put the state that I was in, Utah. I'd put the city that I was in, Salt Lake. And then, um, and that's, let's say that that was, it was all in one city. Um, if it wasn't, I would have taken that city session and broken it into one city. And then from there, I may do something else. So I'll have the client name on there. So now I've got date, date breakdown, um, type of session, client name. And then from there, let's say that I shot 20 people. I have each person on their first shot. They just hold a little uh, dry erase word that I have. I write their name on there. And then I would put their name. So let's say that it was Terry Johnson. I'd put Terry Johnson. It was, uh, you know, Rick Masters. I'd put Rick Masters. It was Bill Nichols. I'd put Bill Nichols. So now I've got the date, the type of session, the client, the name. And later on, I can find those by anything. And then, um, so now I've got my images keyworded. So they're in this field, keywords that I can search later on. And now I'll go through really quick and I'll just reject images. So I go through every image, let's say it's 300, takes just a couple of minutes. Inevitably I have some images that look very close to each other, but one slightly better than the other. At first this used to take me a while, now it's very fast. I'll just take my right key, I'll start pressing the right, and I'll hit an image and just right off the bat, whatever hits my brain, if I like it or don't like it. If I like it, it stays. If I don't like it, I just hit X. I just go through and whatever images I don't like, I X. So I take this 300 sash, let's say this 300 sash session down to uh, 150 shots. I'll take all those rejected photos. I've rejected them. I know that I'm never gonna use them again. I highlight them all, I right click, I remove them from the catalog, I delete them from the disc and I'm done. Now I'll go through and I'll look at my images and I'll rate them. And typically I'll rate them a three or higher if I wanna work on them, or I'll leave them unrated. So let's say that I rate a bunch of fours and fives. I'll start with my fives and I'll start editing those. 
If I can do the edit right in Lightroom and it's good to go, so maybe I have to go in and just fix a blemish or maybe just change some contrast or something, I generally don't change too much on the image because I have my settings down in headshot sessions and other lifestyle sessions or environmental sessions. I'm not changing a lot. So if I can get it right in Lightroom, I'll mark it as green. Green, meant it's, green means that it's ready to export to the client. Or if I'm gonna do further retouching in Photoshop or I'm gonna send it out, I'll mark it yellow. So now I've taken my session, I've keyworded it, I've applied a rating to it, and I've got rid of the rejects, and then I've applied a color to it at this point. And that's my typical workflow. So I'm gonna show you some of that right now. So let's go, um, so we have Lightroom open right now. You can see 18,212 images. The majority of my filtering that I do is down here in the lower filter bar. And you can see that there's ratings here and there's colors here. And then there's flags. And I'll, I'll kind of walk you through each of these really quick. So let's start from the left. I could go on here and click a color and say, show me all photos with the green label. And now I click on that and you can see that 259 out of 18,212 have a green label. It's like this one is green, it's ready to go. This is a shot from the Carlsbad flower fields, shot pretty low, big, long, long kind of infinite horizon. And you can see I've rated it five stars, it's green. And then if I come down here to keywords, um, Carlsbad flowers, this was taken quite a while ago. Um, this was brought back in from Photoshop and I didn't have any other um, keywords in here. I typically now have the date, I would have landscape, maybe I was shooting this for stock, maybe this was for a client, I would have all of that information in there. So now if I was to filter for five star images or for any images that had the word Carlsbad in them, this image would come up. So let's get rid of that green. Let's go down here, look for five star images and let's look at the grid. And now I can see all of these images that I'm saying are five stars. So we can bring this one up of, um, you know, of Newport Beach right here. I said that this was a five star image. This is actually a daytime image taken with a 10 stop ND filter. And you can see I rated it five. It doesn't have any keywords in it. I wasn't really strict on it then, like I am now. So let's turn these filters off. So I do most of my filtering right here. and I just filter by color and I filter by rating. Okay, so we've got that. Now, if I wanna go and I wanna filter my library, so let's look on the left-hand side of the navigator here. I've got the catalog, so I can choose all photographs, previous export as a catalog, particular folders. I can go into collections and go by collections. So I could say, let's go to family vacations. Now I've got this library filter up here where I can do, go by text. So I can say any searchable field, and this can be the file name, this could be the rating, any EXIF data, this could be the keywords, um, anything that's in there, the extension, the date, the camera type, the lens, anything that's in there, um, I can search by that. And I can say it either contains this word, it contains all the words, if I put three words in there, it's gotta contain all of them. Um, doesn't contain what I'm putting in there, so I could say show me everything from family vacations that is not Paris and it would bring those up. Or I could say starts with, so it would have to start with that or ends with. Um, now, when you're doing any searchable field and you say starts with, that's a little iffy because some, where there's multiple words in a field, they create the kind of their own field and so they'll all start with. But I can go down here to file name, copy name, title, caption, keywords, searchable metadata, IPTC, EXIF, any searchable plugin field, so if a plugin writes to this. Um, so I will really quickly you know, go in here and just say, show me Paris. I mean, now I can see that 339 out of 455 photos in this catalog have the keyword Paris in them. And I can see 2015, Europe, Nichols, Nichols Family, Paris Vacation. So really quickly I can go in, I can say show me any photos that say Nichols. Right now I can see 455 photos have Nichols in them. And there's some in here that are from North Carolina, some that are from Florida, whatever. And go into attribute and same thing. Um, with the attribute I can choose a flag so I can say show me ones that were pics show me ones that were rejects, or show me any that are not flagged. I can say rating, so I can say show me all three or greater images. So this is all images that I rated three stars or higher. Maybe I would just want the three star ones. I can say show me ones where the rating is equal to three stars. And here we go. Um, let's undo that. Say show me a color, show me any that are red, there's none. Yellow, there's none. Green, there's none. So none of these vacation ones I've colored. And you can see down here, green photos. Those are some smart collections. Um, let's undo that, undo that, undo that. I've got nickels in here, so let's get rid of the nickels. And now, um, or I could say kind. Zero stars, master photos. So let me bring this over. 
Uh, let me actually make the navigator smaller. So for kind, I could say master photos, that's the file that I brought in. I can say a virtual copy, I can create a virtual copy of an image. So I can say only show me virtual copies. And then I can say show me videos. For metadata, I can go date, camera, lens, label. I can also add them so I can change these to any of this metadata. And whatever I select in here. So I can see that on Family Vacations I've used four cameras. I've used a 5D, Mark III, a Hasselblad H4D, a Fuji X30. They say show me all the X30 images or show me all the X100S images or show me all the Hasselblad images, just one. Um, unknown lens here, but if I go back to all four cameras I can see the various lenses that I've used so I can filter by my tilt shift images, um, label for ones that have labels, and then date. Or I can just turn the filters off. So that is the basics of filtering. So the couple of things to keep in mind, if you want to use this library filter that's right here, you need to be in grid view, and then you can uh, filter in those images, whatever group you've chosen on the left. So right now I'm in f uh, family vacations. So if I go to all photographs, now my library filter in that grid view is going to cross all photographs in this catalog. And I can go across, so now if you would jump to metadata, you'll see there's 31 cameras, you know, from my 5DSR to my 1DX Mark II to a Hasselblad to iPhone, you know, the original iPhone to iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, um, you know, to the, so that's an unknown known lens. 370 dates, four, four different labels, blue, green, yellow, and no label, and then all of these various lenses. So I can say, show me, you know what, I haven't, I don't remember what I ever shot with um, a 400 F2.8. It's probably surf stuff, or this 300 F2.8. So yeah, it's all surf stuff. So I can go through and I can go, oh, okay, cool. So I have these 25 images, you know, from you know, this 300 F2.8. Let's go back to grid view. So you can see when I go into a particular image that disappears, the filtering does. I need to be in grid view, but the filtering stays down below. Um, and that is the basics of filtering. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, with filtering, I'd love to answer them for you. I thought that this was really important because as your catalog grows, you're gonna to wanna to know how to find your images. This will help you find images when you have hundreds of thousands of images. Maybe I shot a client three years ago, I don't know the date, but they call me up and they say, hey Bill, a couple years back, you shot um, Terry Johnson for us. We lost our images, can you resend them to us? I don't know when I shot Terry Johnson. I can go in here really quickly and I can go client name, right? So I could put the client name because that was in my keywords, comma, Terry Johnson, and then it would show me just those. And I could really quickly export them for them. I'm done. I've gone through a couple of hundred thousand images in just a minute, and we're finished. So that's it, really quick session tonight on filtering. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, let me know below. Closing on 5,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody so much. One, for all the well wishes for my family with the new baby, then just for watching. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe below. Do it now. I've got some great giveaways coming up, especially as we get to 5,000 and 10,000 subscribers. And really, I just want to be able to interact with all of you. I do that best if you're a subscriber because then I, you will get the notifications of the new videos. I can tell you when I'm doing some subscriber only stuff. And then um, that's it. So thanks for watching tonight. I really appreciate it, you guys. I hope that you found this useful. If you have any more questions, ask below in the comments. I respond to everybody. It might take me a few days, especially right now, but I do respond to everybody. So thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys have an awesome day. Um, I know you will, so thanks so much. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Talk to you soon.